So in today's video, we are going to focus on the theorems of inequalities as well as the absolute value function. Now let's start off with this. Let A and B be members of the set R. So A and B are real numbers. Now if A minus B is a positive number, if A minus B is a positive number, then what this primarily means is that either A is greater than B or B is less than A. Now if there is a possibility or a chance that A is equal to B, then we can say that A is either greater than or equal to B or B is less than or equal to A. So giving two real numbers, if A minus B is a positive number, then either A is greater than B or B is less than A. Now if there is a possibility or a chance that A is equal to B, then we say that A is greater or equal to B or better still, B is less than or equal to A. Again. Let A, B, and C be members of the set R. Then I. Exactly one of the following situations is true. That is, either A is greater than B, A is equal to B, or better still, a is less than B. Now we call this the law of trichotomy. So for the law of trichotomy, it basically states that if we have two real numbers, that is A and B, then exactly one of these situations is true. That is, either A is greater than B, a is equal to B, or better still, A is less than B. 2. If A is greater than B, and B is also greater than C, then we can make a conclusion that A is greater than C. Now we call this the law of transitivity. The law of transitivity. 3. If A is greater than B and another real number, say C, is added to both A and B, now, because initially A was greater than B, then in that case, A plus C will also be greater than B plus C. Ivan, if A is greater than B and C is greater than zero, then AC is greater than BC. So for Ivan, let's assume that we have the value of A to be 5, we have the value of B to be 2, and then let's say we have C equals 1. Now you realize that 5 is greater than B, and 1 is also greater than 0. Now we want to prove that AC 
will be greater than BC. So we multiply A, which is 5, by 1, that is for C, and then we have 5 here, and you realize that this 5 is greater than 2 times 1, which is 2. So it makes this theorem correct, because 5 is greater than 2, and hence AC is greater than BC. Now to V, if A is greater than B and C is less than 0, then AC is less than BC. So for this same set of values, this time let's assume C to be negative 1. Now, if C is negative 1, then it means that A times C becomes negative 5. And you realize that this is less than 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Now, moving away from this, let's focus on the absolute value function. So, given that X is a member of set R given that X is a member of set R then the absolute value of X which is written as X in bars is equal to X if X is greater than 0 is equal to 0 if x is equal to 0 or is equal to negative x if x is less than 0. So given that x is a member of R, that is x is a real number, the absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than 0, that is if x is positive, the absolute value of x is equal to 0 if x is equal to 0 or the absolute value of x is equal to negative x if x is negative or better still x is less than zero now let's try to solve some examples let's find the absolute values of these real numbers so we have i absolute value of three i i absolute value of zero and then i i i absolute value of negative 5. So let's try to work out these examples. So i. Now the absolute value of 3 is equal to 3. So from the first line, you realize that the absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than 0. So for i, you realize that we have the value to be 3, and then 3 is greater than 0. Now, since 3 is greater than 0, it means that the absolute value of 3 should be equal to 3. I, I. The absolute value of x is equal to 0 if x is equal to 0. Now, we have the real number in question here to be 0. Now, since the value is 0, it means that the absolute value of 0 should be equal to 0. So, the absolute value of 0 is equal to 0. Now, to i, i, i. The absolute value of negative 5 can be expressed as negative into bracket negative 5. And that should be equal to negative x. Now, negative times negative is positive. Hence, we have the absolute value of negative 5 to be 5. And we see that from the third line. Now, we are saying that the absolute value of x is equal to negative x if x is less than 0. Here we have negative 5 and that is less than 0. 
and we are saying that the absolute value of negative 5 can be expressed as negative into brackets negative 5 and then simplifying this that's going to be 5 therefore 5 is equal to negative x so in place of this negative x we have 5 hence we say that the absolute value of negative 5 is equal to 5 so from this we can make a conclusion you realize that the absolute value of a positive number is still a positive number the absolute value of 0 is equal to 0 and the absolute value of a negative number is still positive notice that the absolute value of any real number can never be negative now we can also define the absolute value as the non-zero distance measured from a real number to its origin now let's consider some of the basic properties of absolute value and try to prove the validity of a few of them now if x and y if x and y are members of sets r that is if x and y are real numbers then one the absolute value of x is greater or equal to zero and the absolute value of y is also greater than or equal to zero thus the absolute value of any real number is greater than or equal to zero two the absolute value of negative x is equal to the absolute value of x now a typical example is if you are asked to find the absolute value let's say the absolute value of negative 2 now the absolute value of negative 2 can be expressed as negative into bracket negative 2 and we simplify this to get 2 and this is equal to the absolute value of 2 thus the absolute value of negative x is equal to the absolute value of x 3 the absolute value of x is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to 0 the absolute value of x is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to 0 4 the absolute value of x minus y is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to y 5 the absolute value of x y is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y 6 the absolute value of x divided by y is equal to the absolute value of x divided by the absolute value of y that is if y is not equal to 0 7 the absolute value of x plus y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y 8 the absolute value of x minus y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y and then lastly the absolute of the absolute value of x is equal to the absolute value of x so in all we have nine properties here and in the next section 
we are going to prove the validity of just four of them property 5 property 6 property 7 and property 8 so now let's focus on property 5 that is according to our list we have property 5 to be the absolute value of x y is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y so we are going to prove the validity of this property now to do that we need to consider four different cases for x and y so for case one we are going to assume that both x and y are equal to zero so we say that for x equals zero and y equals zero now we are going to prove that the absolute value of x y is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y now from definition we're able to establish the fact that the absolute value of x is equal to zero if x is equal to zero so since x is equal to zero we have the absolute value of x also to be equal to zero now in the same way since y is equal to zero the absolute value of y will also be zero since x is equal to zero and then y is also equal to zero it means that zero times zero is also zero therefore the absolute value of x y will also be zero so from this equation that is absolute value of x y equals absolute value of x times absolute value of y let's substitute these values in here so absolute value of x y is equal to zero absolute value of x is equal to 0 times absolute value of y is equal to 0 so we have 0 equals 0 now since the left hand side is equal to the right hand side for case 1 we've been able to prove that the absolute value of x y is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y now let's consider the second case that is case 2 now for case 2 we are going to take both x and y to be greater than 0 so that's for x greater than 0 and y greater than 0 now what this primarily means is that both x and y are positive numbers so from definition since x and y are both greater than zero it means that the absolute value of x is equal to x and the absolute value of y is also equal to y and since x and y are both positive values or positive numbers it means that x y is also positive thus x y is also greater than zero so from this equation the absolute value of x y is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y now the absolute value of x y is going to be x y since it is positive that is greater than zero and that is equal to the absolute value of x is equal to x and the absolute value of y is equal to y here also you realize that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side hence for case 2 we've been able to also prove that the absolute value of x y is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y now let's move on to case 3 Now for case 3, we are going to take 
x less than 0 and then y greater than 0. Now if you multiply a negative value by a positive value, then you still have a negative value. So what this primarily means is that we are going to have x, y to be less than 0. Now since x is less than 0 and since x is negative, it means that the absolute value of x is equal to negative x. We have the absolute value of y to be equal to y since y is positive and the absolute value of xy is equal to negative xy. The absolute value of xy is equal to negative xy. Now these two are negative values simply because they are less than zero. So the absolute value of x is equal to negative x and the absolute value of xy is also equal to negative xy simply because here they are less than zero. So from this equation, we have absolute value of xy equals absolute value of x times absolute value of y. Let's substitute the values, their respective values into this equation. So absolute value of xy is equal to negative xy and that is equal to absolute value of x is equal to negative x and then absolute value of y is also equal to y. Now we can simplify the left hand side to look like the right hand side. So that is negative x times y equals on the right hand side negative x times y. Now here you realize that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Hence also for case 3 we've been able to prove that the absolute value of xy is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y. Now the results of x is less than 0 and y is greater than 0 is equal to the results for x greater than 0 and y less than 0. Now let's move on to case 4. So for case 4, we are going to consider both x and y to be less than 0. So for x is less than 0 and y is less than 0, we are going to have xy to be greater than 0 because a negative value times another negative value is equal to a positive value. Therefore, the absolute value of x is going to be negative x because x is negative. The absolute value of y is going to be negative y because y is negative and the absolute value of xy is going to be xy because xy is positive. Now from this equation, we have absolute value of xy equals absolute value of x times absolute value of y. Absolute value of xy is equal to xy and that is equal to Absolute value of x is equal to negative x. Absolute value of y is equal to negative y. And then negative x times negative y is equal to xy. Now since the left hand side is equal to the right hand side, it means that also for case 4, we've been able to prove that the absolute value of xy is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y. So for all four cases, we've been able to prove that the absolute value of xy is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y. That's absolute value of xy 
is equal to the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y hence the proof now let's move on to property 6 now for property 6 for property 6 we are going to prove that we are going to prove that the absolute value of x over y is equal to the absolute value of x divided by the absolute value of y if y is not equal to 0. Now given the fraction given the fraction x over y we know that multiplying this fraction by y results to x that is x divided by y times y is equal to x now you realize that all the values here are positive values that is x over y is greater than zero y is greater than zero and then x is also greater than zero now from definition we know that the absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than zero now since all the values here are positive that is x is greater than zero it means that x should be equal to the absolute value of x so x over y should be equal to the absolute value of x over y y should be equal to the absolute value of y and then x should also be equal to the absolute value of x now at this point let's divide through by the absolute value of y so we divide both sides of the equation by the absolute value of y and then we have this cancelling out this and you realize that we have on the left hand side the absolute value of x over y is equal to the right hand side the absolute value of x divided by the absolute value of y where y is not equal to zero hence the proof so in this video I've been able to prove the validity of property 5 and property 6. Now using the same solution process for property 5, you should be able to prove the validity of property 7 and property 8. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.